it is said for a spiritual aspirant, the spiritual journey begins after establishing the Guru Peet in someone, someplace, somewhere. Establishing that relationship of the Guru and the discipleship. We all have that inner hunger to know ourselves, to know something more about ourselves, to know God. Guru is, the Guru Peak is that place that awakens the divine qualities in us. What are the divine qualities? The first, unconditional love. There is a difference between just love and unconditional love. Unconditional love is a divine quality. Yes, two people love each other as long as they are good to each other and they give each other what they want. Everything is fine. But the moment something, someone's expectation is not met. All kinds of things happen. We are capable of giving and receiving unconditional love. That's within us. That is the divine quality. We have human quality and also we have divine quality within us. Living in the world, we deal with human qualities, but where do we go to express the divine quality? At least one person, one place in our life. We choose that this is where I am going to establish my guru peak, the seat of my guru. And that's where I'm going to explore that aspect of my life. Love and trust are the prerequisite to go any deeper. Again, Guru is a human being, so is the disciple. Nobody is perfect. If we establish that relationship based on perfection, that's not possible. There are many stories uh, that talk about this. There was a prince. He had gone to a forest and where the wood cutting was forbidden. But he heard the sound cut, cut, cut. Somebody was chopping on a tree. He went out, looked, and the man who was chopping the branch of the tree looked at this prince, and he got scared, and his axe fell down. Prince came back inside his palace. Next moment, the sound started again. He started cutting the tree. 
it happened two or three times. So finally, the prince walks to the person and he says, please tell me, how can you come down and pick up the axe and get up the tree so quickly? He said, oh, Maharaj, I don't climb down and climb up. I know a mantra, a karshan mantra, the mantra of attracting things to me. With that mantra, I just call the axe up and it comes to into my hand. Prince said, I would like to know this knowledge. He said, I could teach you, but it won't work with you because you are a prince and I'm a simple woodcutter. You will not establish Guru Peet in me. And until you have established that Guru Peet means unconditional love and trust, respect, this knowledge will not flourish in you. He said, No, no, I don't. What a guru and disciple relationship is all about. You give me the mantra and I will practice it. He gave him the mantra. The prince bowed to him, accepted him as his guru. And the condition was, you go and I practice this so many jobs, so many times you repeat this mantra during a month. And at the end of the month, this mantra will flourish. Prince went back, the woodcutter went back. On the last day of the month, the woodcutter said to his wife, let's pack up and leave. Because I know he's not going to get it. Because I'm a woodcutter and he's a prince and he can never have that devotion and love and trust for me. So they packed up the house and they were about to leave and all of a sudden they see there is an army coming, prince carrying gifts for the guru. And he says, oh, Guru Dev, the mantra has flourished. Now I can do that. So the guru was wrong. Guru did not trust the disciple that he will do it. But the disciples stayed on his dharma. He knew what his dharma was and he was able to accomplish the mantra. So guru and disciple, yes, there is a relationship, but each one has their own dharma. Each one has their own way to, to fulfill what is required of this relationship. You are here, Babaji is my guru. Babaji is a human being. What about if you see Babaji coming out of a bar someday? <laughs> what will you do? It's a test right there. If your love is conditional, then this relationship doesn't exist. I will tell you another story while we are on the stories. These are all stories I have heard from Sardar Baba, my guru. Again, there has to be a prince in a story, in a village, village prince. He had a Guru who lived outside of the village. And he also had a mistress. The mistress was very jealous of the Guru. Why he goes there and spends so much time with this guy? So finally, one day she said, Look, that guy is nothing. He said, Oh, no, no, he's my Guru. He's a very holy man, enlightened man. He said, I'll show you what he's all about. 
she goes to his ashram and says, Oh, Babaji, I am tired of living in this world. I'm tired of living this life of mistresses. Please take me in, in your ashram. Being the kind-hearted Babaji, he said, yeah, come on in. There is a hut over there. You can stay in there. She started staying in the hut. Even asked to have her head shaped, hair shaved up and look holier than before. Started putting red dots. Puja. Rain skin. So what night, Babaji hears a little knock on his hut. It was her. She said, it's raining. My hut is leaking. Can I come in your hut? She said, come on in. That became a routine. Lo and behold, after some months, they found out she was pregnant. Babaji comes to her and says, look, we can live here. Prince is going to kill me. Let's pack up and leave. So they packed up their stuff and snuck out in the night. Lived a life of gypsies. Pretty soon they had three or four kids and some chickens and all their pots and pans carrying on a buffalo, chickens, goats, wherever they went, that was their life. A few years passed. One year there was drought and there was no food anywhere. They said, you know, why don't we go back to that old place? Maybe he has forgotten or maybe he will have a little compassion on you. But, oh, no, I'm not going there. They said, no, give him a chance. Because I, she also knew him. So when they came near the village with his whole water buffalo loaded with pots and pans and chickens following them and five kids and he was scared. But all of a sudden they saw the prince was coming towards them with gifts in his hand and fruits of saris and this and that. And he came and bowed. He said, Guruji, what happened? So he told him, look, this is what happened. He said, you are still my guru. I live my dharma, no matter what. I gave you my promise to have the unconditional love. This is all human relationships. That's what I do with other humans. But you are my guru. I have the same love, same respect for you. In that very moment, as the story goes, the chariot descends from heaven. And the sound comes, Oh, prince, your guru devotion is so strong that you deserve to come in heaven in this body. Come. He said, how can I come alone without my guru? He said, your devotion is so strong that even he can come. <laughs> the guru said, but how can I go without her? <laughs> and my five kids. The voice came, the guru bhakti or devotion is so strong that they all can come. And they all descended. Now, this is a story. 
and through the stories, what our sages and seers have really uh, tried to convey that the unconditional love is not based on our judgments or our expectations and our things. If we are in this guru disciple relationship, it's a tall order because you are dealing with a human being. You have human relationships, but how can you go beyond your conditional to unconditional? If that unconditional love, we can practice in one place, hopefully we can practice it another. Maybe we can practice with our spouse, with our children, with our parents, with our whatever. And the day we are able to do that, we have ascended to the divine realm. It's easy to love someone who is good to you, who does everything just to please you. Can you love someone who does not meet those requirements? And the day we are able to do that, we become a saint. Presence of a guru in our life gives us this opportunity. And the guru can be, doesn't need to be a Babaji sitting and this and looking holy. A person can establish that guru teach him anything, even a piece of stone, provided as you approach that love, respect begins to arise in your heart. So it's a little easier if there is a human being that we feel a little connection with to establish that and explore that potential. I was just reflecting. Today is a very special day for me, not because it's just Guru Purnima. On this day in 1991, I left my previous life and arrived in Sonoma. Penniless, not knowing anyone in town, did not have any money on me. And I had left my previous life according to my guru's just little suggestions. When I wanted to walk on this, take on this life, he said, well, you think that's easy? But if you want to, walk away. Go to a new place where you don't know anyone and go penniless. If you are, if this is the path for you, You'll be tested and tried for three days. But on the fourth day, if you find a place to set your foot somewhere, you should know the Divine Mother's blessing is with you. That's all. My guru suggested that. There was a hunger inside to experience something different than what I was doing. I left. I had a big breakfast, filled my car with gas, and left the town with a sleeping bag in my car. That was the trust in the words of my guru. 
fear came in, where is my next meal? Where I'm going to sleep? And all those came in. And the only word that will come to my mind in that moment was my guru's blessing is with me. Something will happen. That's it. Not big, long arguments or write down, Babaji, please tell me what should I do? Nothing. Guru says, walk away, go to a new place. If you are on the right path, three days later, you'll find a place to be. That's it. What we do, we go to Babaji, Babaji, okay, now I know what I have to do, but please tell me every step. No. Leave a little space for mystery. In that mystery, you give a chance for your own Shakti to arise and manifest. Too much dependency on the Guru, too much dependency on the Babaji. You don't get to explore your own inner Shakti. I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but you know, in 1991, I came to this town and today I was walking around the grounds. I have been watching for the last three, four days. So much love has been poured here that it's uh, I could not describe. People coming from the community, meaning just paying attention to every little thing, food and I'm not going to count each one of them, but every action that has come from that you see here today is the expression of that love. Unconditionally. Many people came in and they didn't come in here to see that Babaji will notice them. They just came and did it. And that was an unconditional love. The way I look at it, it's all grace of Guru. The Guru's grace is all around us. No matter where we are, the Guru's grace is there, provided we are open to receive it. July 2nd. That was the day. There were, it was not easy. There were moments. First three days I went hungry. But I didn't stop. Started cursing that, oh, my guru. <laughs> there will be challenges. As long as we are living a human life, ups and downs are bound to happen. Challenges will come. But if our trust and our love is firm, everything passes. So this day of Guru Purnima is really a reminder of a day to reflect the presence of that unconditional love. Unconditional love. Where is unconditional love in our life? May we all reflect on that. Is there not only with the Guru, with anybody, just think about anybody. Do you have unconditional love? Mothers have that with their children. You pick up a baby and baby could pee on your face. What are you going to do? <laughs> that is the unconditional love. At least in the beginning. When the baby grows up and then you get, then it becomes unconditional. But even if it's conditional, parents' heart 
always holds that unconditional love for their child. Child may not recognize it, child may not see it, but it's always there. Parents are human beings, they have their own limitations. But deep inside, we ought to know that there is unconditional love in the heart of my parents for me. They may not be able to express it. They may not be able to show it. They may not be able to talk about it, but they do have that. It's just behind all the other things. So this day is also a reminder of that, that each heart has the presence of unconditional love. And my job is to look for that, not for the conditional things. Give every person in my life that benefit. No matter how bad things look on the surface, may we always leave little space for that unconditional love. To tell you the truth, I have been just overwhelmed over the last two, three days just to see the outpouring of love uh, from the community and people connected with the ashram to just showing up. And maybe it's excitement after, after Corona. This is the first time we are getting a chance to gather again and meet in person. Um, but every action, every thought that has gone into holding this uh, Guru Purnima today um, is an expression of that love. On a hard day, you drove from hours. You had many other things you could be doing, but here you are. That is the acknowledgement of that love. Please know that Guru is not a person. The real Guru dwells within you in the form of your own higher self. The best you can be. We all want to be the best. At least that desire is there. That is the Guru. But then we, because of conditioning or habits or laziness, we do some other things. But deep inside we'll know, we know what is the, what I want to do. So that is the guru. You know what you, you're supposed to do, but you do some other things. But the part of you that knows that is the Guru. So Guru in a person is just like an altar, just like a picture that you go and do little puja, little incense, or you bow, you kneel, whatever you do. It's just a reminder of the, what it's representing. So Babaji sitting on this chair is just the reminder of the Guru that is within you, and that guru energy is all around us also. People say guru's grace. 
What is Guru's grace? It's the grace of your own higher self. You may have a little conflict with somebody. There are two choices. Either you keep building that up or try to resolve it in your own heart. That is the Guru's grace. You forgive someone who has hurt you. It is the Guru's grace. Guru within your own higher self that knows that there is a better choice. So Guru's grace is, is not like Babaji sending thousand points of light at you. Let your own light shine. And whenever you give that love, acceptance, forgiveness to someone, you're not doing anybody else a favor. Let that not be a cause of your own arrogance. But yes, I'm great because I forgave you. No. Let that be a cause of humility that the grace of my guru has enabled me to do this. So sometimes we do some spiritual work like this, but then our arrogance comes in, that I am holier than thou because I did this. And on a spiritual journey, arrogance is the first distraction. We do this work with humility. Humility is a great quality. I remember when I was little, my father would pick me up and put me on his shoulders and walk to the mango grove we had outside of the village. And I must have been this big. And he said, look, that branch that has mangoes is bowing. And the branch that has no mangoes is up in the air dancing. He didn't ex explain anything. He just pointed it out. And I found the meaning much later. But anybody who has some substance is humble. If there is no substance inside, then I'm trying to prove from outside that I'm great. Look at me, I'm great. The one who is truly has some substance is humble. Humility is a great quality. So these things, humility, kindness, forgiveness, are the real ornament of a human being. Those are the jewels. Those are the ones that are remembered. Post-COVID, I have been going to lots of services. There have been lots of deaths. And every service, all I hear about people that people talk about is not because how big a house he had or how many cars he had or how many whatever. People only talk about those qualities. living a human life in this world with our friends. <clears throat> our life is blessed if we are able to stop, take a step back and look at ourselves. That am I compromising those qualities in the race of trying to impress others? There's nobody that needs to be impressed if you are impressed by yourself, that's all you need to do.
every morning as we wake up, look in the mirror and say, Oh, myself, I give you my word. I will honor you today. I will respect you today. I will not subject you to the situation that make you feel any less. If we can do that, that's the best Guru Puja that we can perform. Honoring yourself, loving yourself, respecting yourself. Sometimes we want to be accepted and we want to be liked. We end up doing things that are hurtful to others just to please somebody else. We do something that is hurtful to the other. We should pay attention to those qualities that we have. May we not try to feel good at the expense of the other. That's loving yourself, respecting yourself, honoring yourself. I may have my own truth, may have my own way of looking at things. May I not judge others at the same. Other has his or her own story. Leave him alone. Live and let live. That way you keep your mind free. Baba was in Sonoma and someone came to him and said, Baba, what can we do to save the Mother Earth? Baba said, oh brother, save yourself first. Save yourself first. And if you save yourself, meaning be a good human being, if the earth is populated with good human beings, earth will be saved. We talk about change the society, bring good things in the society. Society is consisting of individuals. If each individual takes responsibility for the self, society will be saved. So the real work is here, not out there. And this work is only done with the grace of the Guru. And this Guru Purnima is a wonderful day that reminds us to, wherever we are running in our life, may we stop, take a step back, and ask ourselves, what am I truly devoted to? What am I truly devoted to? Where is my unconditional love? The day we find that, we'll find great source of energy right there. It has been a hot day and we are all sitting in a cool shade on the grass. So I'm feeling very comfortable. I can go on speaking like this forever, but just to feel your love. And, but I know that I should keep it short. So thank you all very much for your love and for being a part of Guru Purnima and for doing what you have done together. And it's, it's inspiring to me. That's all I can say. Very inspiring. I know it has been broadcasted on Zoom, so I don't see you, but each one of you, my love and blessings on this auspicious day. And we'll connect again.
let's just take a moment to close our eyes. Lighten your mind. Soften your eyes. Relax your facial muscles, neck, shoulders, spine. Soften the belly and get grounded. On this auspicious occasion of Guru Purnima, may we receive the blessing of Bhagwan Shiv from where our lineage starts, lineage of the Gurus. Bhagwan Dattatreya. Baba Kinaram. And Agureshwar. May we be protected, guided, inspired. By their presence in our life. May the light of the Guru shine through us all, no matter where we are. We are not separate from the Guru. We are the Guru. I bow to that Guru within you and thank you for being here. Om Maharahara Mahadev Namah.